You don't ever really want to let go as an athlete. Truthfully. In the back of your mind, you're always trying to think to yourself, if the right set of circumstances happen, I feel like I can still play. I got the second chance. That's lucky. Why am I going to do something if I'm not having fun at this point? Welcome to Michelob Ultra McEnroe versus McEnroe. I'm Ashley Brewer here alongside James Blake. And today we are about to watch a living legend reflecting on his remarkable career in a never before seen celebration of joy. That's right, Ashley. On one side of the net is the illustrious John McEnroe. On the other side, virtual John McEnroe. Five different opponents, each one representing a different year in his illustrious career. So what will that look like? Well, let's find out. Everybody, you are in for a treat. I'm Patrick McEnroe. No, not one of the McEnroes who'll be playing tonight. This is where the magic's going to happen. On one side, John McEnroe playing on a real tennis court. On the other side, over there, a series of virtual avatars, each representing an individual year in McEnroe's career. We are blurring the lines here between reality and virtual reality. This is something you have never, ever seen before. This is not about which McEnroe wins. To quote John himself, you cannot be serious. But what I can tell you is that we are going to have a heck of a lot of fun out here. So it's that time, time to welcome my big brother, the legend, the icon, Mr. John McEnroe. Okay, so we're gonna set the tone here. I wanna know who is more robotic, <laughs> virtual John McEnroe or Ivan Lendl? You're trying to get me in trouble <laughs> right away. We didn't get along too well, but we did respect each other, I think. I certainly respect what he brought to the table. He was very robotic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes robots win, hopefully not in this case. I trained for this. Yes, you know. for this specifically. I did. I still love to play, and um, I think that hopefully people could see uh, when they see this that uh, I, I, I can still move around a little bit mm -hmm. for my age. I'd love to get out. I have a tennis academy, and I love to get out with the kids there and show them that I'm not some dinosaur. <laughs> and the only way to do that is to, you know, take it to him on a tennis court, and that mm -hmm. court gets bigger and bigger every year. To complete the embarrassment, Gunkhart would win only three games in the entire evening, prompting some to wonder why McEnroe bothered to wear a sweatband. In 1979, you became a Grand Slam champion. How did your life change from that point? Probably 79, uh, I started to really figure it out. It was my first big win at Madison Square Garden, which is where I grew up uh, going to Nick games, Ranger games. And we used to have a year-end event there. So that was really my big breakthrough, like uh, beating Jimmy Connors for the first time and Arthur Ashe in the final. So that was an amazing time for me. 
And I think it was the most fun I ever had on the tour that year. It was sort of climbing the ladder, traveling the world, meeting different people. Winning a lot, which made it a whole lot more fun. The culminate playing my buddy who I looked up to, Vetus Carolitis. We were two fellow Queens boys that grew up 15, 20 minutes from Flushing Meadow. So this was like a monumental moment. It turned out to be quite a night and uh, quite a year for me. Probably, as I said, the most fun I ever had. John meets the very first Avatar, 1979 John McEnroe. There's a new rising star in the tennis world. Don't disregard McEnroe. Does John McEnroe have what it takes to ever become number one in the world? Here comes John McEnroe. John McEnroe just can't miss. John McEnroe explodes onto the scene. Just set yourself before the match is normal. Anytime I get to play Bjorn in a match, it, it's good for me. I'm He's already won this tournament 10 or 20 years ago, so I hope I can uh, win it for the first time. McEnroe serving a championship point. Oh. McEnroe wins! McEnroe takes it all! I have a feeling this is only the beginning for this kid. Now on the court, 1979 John McEnroe. Oh, wow. You ready to face yourself? Yeah, I'm all set. Come on. All right, time to lay down the rules of McEnroe versus McEnroe. It's a best of five friendly exhibition, not a competitive match. We're here to have fun. John will play a total of five games, not sets, one against each of the following McEnroe avatars. Nineteen seventy nine was the year John exploded onto the tennis scene. He also exploded at some umpires. So let's meet John McEnroe, bandana in all. Fifteen love. Bad luck, bad luck, man. It's like John Macron 2022, still got plenty of pop. That serve, still, still in 2022, still very comfortable. <laughs> 15 all. Don't be so cocky, okay? Yeah, let's go. This is a tough test the first year <laughs> that he won a Grand Slam. Yeah, and I mean, fresh legs back there in 79. He was fresh on tour, playing so well. Finishes it off at net. Nineteen seventy nine just got aced by himself. Forty fifteen. There you have it. John just served ninety five miles per hour. So scan the QR code and fans have the chance to win a year's worth of ninety five calorie Michelob Ultra. Back to the game. John McEnroe. The experience coming through as he defeats a 1979 version of himself. Youth is valuable, but look at 2022 John. He's stronger than ever.
1981, you were number one. What was your mentality going into that year? Well, my mentality was that the game was exploding. It was super exciting to be around. I felt privileged in a way to be part of this. I felt hopefully I was adding something. But you had a lot of these great characters. Borg was this swashbuckler, just, you know, the aura of him was amazing. Jimmy Connors, he didn't want me to get the mantle of being the best American, so he was battling away to try to keep me from getting that. My buddy Vitas Garolitis was around, Guillermo Vilas. It was, it was an exciting time in tennis. You know, I had worked my way up. I had hit the number one ranking very briefly. I tasted it. I had never won Wimbledon. So winning that in 1981 and then backing it up, beating Bjorn both times in the finals. I knew when I walked off that court, I'm the best player in the world. I actually feel a little goosebumps now, just thinking like, it's nice to sort of get to a place you're not sure you ever get to. You have broken a few rackets. What is the best way to break a racket? The best way to break it, it depends. You know, when we, we have the 79, 81, 82 avatars that still were using wood rackets. You know, you could just give it one of those, it'd be over. Those things broke a lot quicker. The graphite, once that happens, you got to watch it doesn't bounce back, hit you in the head or something. Um, you got to throw it flat. That way, you know, you know it's not going to come up, and you get what you deserve. And like, Matt Grove hit him. Yeah. I did a couple dumb things, you know, where I'd hit a ball, and it'd come bam, bounce back and hit me in the eye. And I'm like, well done, John. <laughs> but it was sort of like I deserved it, I guess, if you believe in karma. But um, generally speaking, at this stage, I find it quite difficult to break a racket, even if I wanted to. <laughs> Nineteen eighty one John McEnroe. My hopes for John McEnroe. McEnroe's looking good out there. Should be an easy first round for McEnroe. He's a favorite to win. And the contested call. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. That ball was on the line. Shock flew up. Will McEnroe get it together? McEnroe gets back to the game, and he looks good. Oh, exceptional play by John McEnroe. McEnroe wins Wimbledon. McEnroe takes the open. McEnroe is number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. In the world. One hell of a year for John McEnroe. And now, welcome, 1981 John McEnroe. Let's do this. Hey, uh, yeah, you weren't too bad. See if you can keep it up. In 1981, John McEnroe became number one in the world, the youngest player to achieve this accomplishment at this time. Yeah, he rose through the ranks like a rocket. He also had the firepower <laughs> to break through and prove it, both in his racket and in his attitude. Should be plenty of fireworks in this one. Let's watch. Virtual McEnroe coming out swinging. Hey, yeah, that's no way to treat your older self. She's out. Ah. Ah. Mm. Ah. The ball was out. The movement in 2022 McEnroe. Yeah. <laughs> 30 off. He 
you could still see he's Ooh. still in 2022 sticking to his natural game. That's a good serve. Big serve from 81 McEnroe. Damn, it feels good to beat me. Game, virtual McEnroe. 1981 McEnroe bringing a couple of big hits from the 80s. A little too much firepower for 2022 John McEnroe. Now in 1981, John really became a household name, established himself as the world number one, and that was just too much to bear for 2022 John. <laughs> yeah, you could see the improvement between the avatars from 79 to 81. He really matured as a person and as a player. And he was able to dictate play a little bit more against 2022 John McEnroe out there. And still very vocal <laughs> with the umpire and uh, the rest of the crowd as well. Yeah, 1981, the year he uttered the famous, you cannot be serious, all the while still getting to number one in the world. So there were tantrums uh, amongst the great play from John McEnroe in 81. It's nice he's never really lost that edge. <laughs> me, A ball that is out is out. Okay. It's clearly okay. out. Any ball that's out is out. To, to me, I must clearly know that the call is oh, different than what my linesman makes it. In other words, there hasn't been one mistake by the linesman. There has not been, a, in my mind, a clear mistake made, or I will overrule it. 99% of athletes, they have a meltdown. They lose their focus and their level drops. He called it good and you called it out. Whereas mine stayed the same, and I was able to sort of maintain the proper intensity. I think that's what infuriated people. That was what bothered them. I don't think it bothered them that I yelled at an umpire. I'm not sure they loved umpires either. So welcome back to Michelob Ultra McEnroe versus McEnroe. I'm here to give you a peek behind the smoke curtain. None of this would have been possible without some of the most futuristic technology available. So how do you make a virtual John McEnroe? First, the avatars were brought to life via scanning and motion capture of John with unreal metahuman technology. After analyzing every single match from John's career, each avatar was programmed with adaptive artificial intelligence. Finally, all of that programming was seamlessly incorporated. Every move is synchronized with an intricate robotic return system. This is truly a never been done before combination of technology, ingenuity, and entertainment serving up joy like we've never seen before. Kind of cool. Back to you guys. 82 comes quick, and you've said the most difficult, challenging, and maybe down year of your career. What was it like going from the highest of high to maybe a low point? Well, it wasn't too low. Uh, I'm saying the lowest of these five avatars, in a way, because yeah. um, I had some w worse years, believe me, than 82. McEnroe. McEnroe makes a big Wimbledon return. McEnroe is looking good out there. He's going to go back to back on grass. And McEnroe advances to the final. It's McEnroe versus Connors. I simply cannot believe it. John McEnroe is out at Wimbledon. Will McEnroe recover? We're back stateside. And he's out. McEnroe loses at home. As McEnroe lost his edge. What's going on with John McEnroe? A shot at redemption for McEnroe. McEnroe wins! It's the longest tennis match ever. Never bet against John McEnroe. And now, welcome 1982 John McEnroe. He 
got a look alike. <laughs> yeah, funny. I'm better looking now. In the 82 Davis Cup, John played and won what was the longest match in tennis history. Okay. That guy looks like his hair's a little shorter, okay. That's a full head of hair on John McEnroe. Definitely a little hair envy on my end. 15 uh, love. Did you see him chase after that ball? Yeah, still got the mobility. Gets it down at the feet of, of McEnroe 1982. His reflexes so fast after all these years. <laughs> Like, that's an unforced glitch. Take it easy, man. You can even see in the body language of the 1982 are. avatar. It's just a little bit more down. <laughs> you see the frustration has bubbled over from 81. 81 was such a great year, winning Wimbledon, winning the U.S. Open, but he was still having those outbursts. And 82, mm -hmm. the outbursts got a little stronger. And... Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's just impossible. That's what do you do just... in that position? What did you get? Do you want John's 80s look? Well, you can shop his look. Just scan the QR code on your screen. Forty fifteen. Nice try, Vicky. You, you use a little topspin. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, that's it. Game. McEnroe. Got McEnroe 2022. Comes into net. That was a performance highlighted just by the consistency of 2022 McEnroe yep. and the inconsistency of his play in 1982. Now, John came into this against 1982 feeling very confident, knowing if there's anyone I can beat, it's probably my 82 <laughs> self. So what did he show you in this match? Well, I think he remembers that time very vividly, and there was a lot of near misses. The finals of Wimbledon, semifinals of the U.S. Open, and a lot, of, a lot of opportunity gone by. So I think he was playing on the fact that this 1982 John McEnroe didn't have that much confidence. We saw a few errors creep in. He wasn't really able to handle the serve of 2022 John McEnroe as well. Yeah, he wasn't intimidated by his 82 <laughs> self, and we saw his play establish that. Yeah, you love to see the competitor still in the 2022 John McEnroe, losing to 81 and then come right back with the confidence to beat uh, 1982. Yeah, can you believe his serve? That's one of the <laughs> things that stood out to me. Yeah, it's incredible. Still got the legs, still got really that perfect motion. It was a very unique motion, and he's kept it all these years, and it served him so well. Yeah, don't lose a good thing. 82 was, you know, I was still in a position to I should have won Wimbledon. I could have won the Open. I didn't. I had a chance at any event that I played in. Um, I just had lost a little bit of that intensity and drive. I don't want to blame it on my buddy retiring, but it was sort of this void. It was like if Larry Bird mid-rivalry with Magic Johnson said, I've retired. I kept thinking, like, he's going to come back. And then Connors like seized on that to his credit. And I lost him in the finals of Wimbledon. That hurt a lot. It was by no means a bad year. Ranking wise, I ended up number one, which is what you want at the end. But it felt a little emptier than like the previous year. And so I felt like this need to sort of like, I got to start to reflect and try to regroup and look for ways to like improve. I was sort of stagnant. Like, I felt like something clicked in.
All of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute. This is actually what I've dreamed of doing. Have you ever seen John McEnroe play this way on clay? No, it's been complete and utter domination. Like, the first time I actually executed, like, the way I thought I should. Gay McEnroe. It's a new year. Is this going to be one for the books? Here comes Tom McEnroe. McEnroe wins. McEnroe wins. And McEnroe wins. He can't be stopped. Gay McEnroe. He does it again. John McEnroe, three times Wimbledon champion. Hey, I was up two sets there and uh, I was playing really well, so uh, just play like probably the best match I've ever played. How much higher can McEnroe possibly go? Oh. Lendl defeats McEnroe at the French Open. How can you possibly call that out? You know, I had a chance to wrap it up and wasn't able to. Does McEnroe's run stop here? McEnroe wins in straight sets. McEnroe is nearly undefeated. He does it again. It's the best, the best, best singles the record. The best singles record of all time. Now welcome 1984 John McEnroe. When it comes to the greatest tennis player of all time, 1984 John McEnroe might just be it. Uh, he was virtually unbeatable, an 82-3 and three record. We just so happen to have the virtual version of him here today. Uh, you might be the first one I'm nervous about. Who the hell is there? You'll find out. Let's get it on. Good luck out there today, John. Let me know if you want me to jump in and we can play some doubles against him. What a point. 2022 McEnroe still finding his way to the net. <laughs> oh, yeah, firing up the crowd, getting yeah. involved, because that has to feel so good to know that you're going up against the greatest version of yourself. Some tennis players have definitely been known to talk to themselves during a match, but this is new to me. <laughs> and that's always what he was so good at. Is that the best you got? Come on, step it up. Let's do this. Bring it on, man. Oh, wow. Oh. 30-15. It's so interesting to think about the differences between the 1982 game and the 1984 game of John McEnroe. Where do you see the adjustments he made that ultimately helped him be so successful? Yeah, he was able to completely refocus. I mean, the, the skills were always there, but as, as I meant, there was a little ad addition to the technology, and he made full use of that. Ah! Ah! 40-15. I mean, there is a reason why 1984 John McEnroe had an 82-3 and three record that year and is so dominant. Yeah, he was hitting his spots, hitting the corners, and, and just coming in beautifully and, and knocking off every volley. Oh, boy. Okay. It's looking like it's causing a few problems for 2022 John McEnroe right I now. see him getting agitated, a little frustrated here. I don't blame him. I would be frustrated <laughs> with 1984 as well. There you have it. John just surfed 95 miles per hour. So scan the QR code and fans have the chance to win a year's worth of 95 calorie Michelob Ultra. Now that sure looks like the player that won Wimbledon, won the US Open, won the Masters.
Now we heard John say, this is the one I'm nervous about and rightfully so because 1984 John McEnroe, absolutely dominant and terrifying. Yeah, this is one of the greatest seasons of tennis that we've ever seen. So for him to come up against him at 63 years old, it's gonna be a tough task. I think he knew that and coming in, it was, it was gonna be too much of a challenge. This was a, really an overpowering 1984 John McEnroe. 1984, I mean, you were on top of the world. You were the king of the sport. How much did you enjoy tennis at that time? Well, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. That's part of why I made it, in a way, I made a change. I was looking for something different. I had this tremendous record. I was winning pretty much everything. Um, but still, it felt a little bit empty. Um, I think you're hearing more about the trials and tribulations of a lot of athletes now. You hear about so many of these young athletes talking about their mental health and wanting to retire at an earlier age. That's a really, really tough one, and it's a very interesting one. I had times where I was like, if I ever win Wimbledon, I'll never go back. I can't handle the pressure. It was overwhelming, and that was 40 years ago. Maybe it's more magnified because of social media. There's more money, ex expectations. When you're trying to be the best at something in any sport, in my opinion, it's tough to get it right. You know, if you want to have sort of a life, you're putting so much time and effort mentally and physically into what you're doing, you need to. You're being hunted more as a top guy. But I was definitely like feeling that towards the end of the year. I had this fantastic year and I did feel sort of like, why am I not feeling like unbelievable all the time? So you sort of have to live like, like robotically in a way, which I, I'm not that good at. That cost me in the end because I wanted more to, more to life than just, you know, being the best at something. And so I was sort of reflecting, you know, I was sort of trying to figure out how can I, I, dare I say, have my cake and eat it too. After 84, I was feeling in some ways off the court happier, but on the court, it wasn't happening as easily and I couldn't figure out why. I started doing things that I hadn't done, lift weights, do yoga, uh, doing a lot more work off the court, which I hadn't done. And it didn't translate the way I wanted to. I didn't stop playing for six months in the early part of 1986 to become a worse tennis player. You know, I stopped to have a child and to enjoy that experience and come back and be a better player. But then 1992 comes and you're 33 on tour at that point. Being that age, how would you approach being on tour with guys that were younger than you? Did you feel like the old guy in the room or did you feel like you were still competitive? You know, I was, well, both, you know, I felt like the old guy, but I felt like I was still competitive. It was the polar opposite of 79 when we were talking about, it's like every match I played almost was sort of like, this could be the last match I play at this event, mm. you know? I, Am I even gonna go to Australia again? Am I ever gonna play Wimbledon? Am I gonna play the US Open? That type of feeling puts more pressure because you realize this is your last chance. So it's, and it's all gotta just flow perfectly. Welcome everyone. John has an announcement to make. The legend will play his last season in tennis. It's McEnroe's farewell tour. This may be the world's last chance to see him in action. Does McEnroe have an ace up his sleeve? What a win for McEnroe. This man cannot retire. He does it again and again and again. 32 looks a lot like 22 for John McEnroe. It's McEnroe versus Cash. Two former champions return to the center court. <laughs> McEnroe wins! Just sensational. One hell of a career for John McEnroe. Welcome to 1992 John McEnroe. What the hell? Me versus me. Yeah. I like my chances.
Yeah, no kidding. We're both over the hill. <laughs> the year was 1992. This is when he was using his experience. He thought he was so wise and experienced <laughs> at 33. Now 63-year-old John's like, I got this. Fifteen love. Uh, that strong play at the net. Yeah. 2022 McEnroe using every last ounce of his speed uh. there. Wow. Fifteen all. Damn, it feels good to beat me. We needed a little bit of drama today. Had to have some drama with McEnroe versus McEnroe. There was no way to not have drama yeah. when you got two McEnroes on the court, even if one of them's virtual. Hang, Hang on. on. Hold my beer. beer. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. It looks like John's heading out wide, maybe going to the bar? <laughs> Get me out of here. No. 15 <laughs> Oh. Just when I thought I had him. Score one for artificial intelligence. Here we go. Out. 30, 40. Yes. Yes! yes. <laughs> Here you go. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. Advantage McEnroe. Incredible way to finish this one out. Yeah! 2022, John McEnroe wins the last game, and with that, wins the match. Having a great time doing it. <laughs>the avatars were pretty lively. They were moving, they had your technique down. Were you impressed by that? This is something that I don't know much about. And so if this worked, I would be like, wow, I'm ahead of the curve for once. So then I'm like, okay, how do we do this? And then sort of getting together in a space and doing this whole motion capture, I thought I was like in the matrix or something. This is like a no lose. There's not too often you get one of those. So you gotta take advantage of it. What's been so incredible about this experience is watching you now at 63, using everything you've been through, every era and decade of your game, to now get you to this point where it seems like you have so much joy playing the game of tennis and being around it. I think people have seen me like more the way I am than the way I was on the court. Are you worried at all people are writing more about your behavior than your tennis perhaps sometimes? Well, you're certainly asking me more about my behavior than my tennis. It was, you gotta be intense. You can't enjoy the moment. You gotta just be super focused. And if you let it go, you're gonna lose your edge. And so I love watching basketball, for example, now, because it seems like, you know, they're super intense and they're trash talking, but you see some of this pure exuberance and joy. I realize it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Uh, One oh, thank final you. cheers on our way oh, cheers. out. Cheers, thank it's been you. It's a pleasure. Ashley, thank you very much. Enjoy, thank yes, you. Yes, I appreciate it.